So what if your bank didn't just respond to your commands, but actually anticipated your needs? And no, I'm not talking about a better mobile app. We're talking about a fundamental shift, a new kind of financial partner that's intelligent and autonomous. That is the core idea behind a really groundbreaking new book that we're going to break down today, The Agentic Bank. This quote from the book's preface just nails the whole concept. It's the difference between a hammer that waits for you to swing it and a teammate that sees a problem and brings you a solution. We are moving away from passive dashboards and into a world of active thinking collaborators. The guide for all of this is Driss Temzamani and his new book, The Agentic Bank. And what's so great is that this isn't just theory. Temzamani lays out a real blueprint for how banks can stop just, you know, playing with AI in a lab and start embedding real working intelligence right into their core operations. Okay, so here's how we're going to tackle this. First, what is this new kind of bank really? Then we're going to meet our new AI teammates. We'll see them in action, which is the fun part. Then we'll get into how they're built for trust, super important. And finally, what all this means for the future of humans working with AI. All right, let's dive in. So what makes this new bank so different? I mean, for years, it's all been about building better digital platforms, right? Well, the book argues that that whole era is coming to a close. What's next is a completely different ballgame. And here is the absolute core difference. The platform era, where we are now, was all built for human control. We have to click the buttons, we have to run the reports, we are in charge of every step. The agentic era, on the other hand, is designed for shared cognition. It's a world where humans and machines literally reason together, collaborating and learning from each other in real time. Okay, so why is this happening right now? Well, it's not really a choice. Banks are caught in this perfect storm. There's an explosion of data, customers want everything instantly, regulations are always changing, and competition is moving at the speed of light. In that kind of environment, the book argues that little time gap between making a decision and actually acting on it, that has become the single biggest risk a bank can have. And this brings us to the agents themselves. The message from the book is crystal clear. You have to stop thinking of AI as a tool. You need to start thinking of it as your new digital teammate. So what in the world is an agentic system? Well, just imagine a team of highly specialized AIs that can see what's happening, figure out the best response, and then actually take action, all while operating inside carefully to find guardrails you've set up. These agents don't just support your work. They are active participants in it. This distinction is absolutely crucial. You see, automation just follows a set of rules. If this, then that. Traditional AI analyzes a bunch of data to help us make a decision. But agents, agents are totally different. They pursue outcomes. An agent doesn't just flag a problem for you. It decides if it should block it, escalate it to you, or maybe even solve it all by itself. Now, for an agent to actually work, it needs five core capabilities that all build on each other. It has to start with perception. It needs to see the world. Then it uses reasoning to figure out what to do and action to, well, do it. But critically, it needs alignment to make sure its actions always match the bank's goals and values. And finally, it has to be able to learn from the results so it gets smarter and better over time. Okay, that's all the theory, but what does this actually look like on a random Tuesday? The book brings this to life with a story. So let's spend a day inside one of these agentic institutions. I want you to meet Lisa. She's the global head of liquidity at a big bank. Her job used to be about drowning in spreadsheets and constantly putting out fires. Today, her job is all about orchestration. She's not asking, what's going wrong? She's asking, what are my agents already doing about it? So at 9.15 a.m., her treasury agents flag a potential funding risk in Argentina and have already simulated three possible solutions for her. By mid-morning, her customer experience agents have put together a predictive briefing for her next client meeting. They're anticipating questions before they're even asked. After lunch, a compliance agent spots a transaction that looks suspiciously like past sanctions evasion and immediately escalates it to her. Then boom, at 3.22 p.m., a sovereign borrower gets downgraded. Before the news even hits the wire, her volatility agents have run the numbers and are on her screen with specific hedges to consider. This isn't science fiction. This is what coordinated, real-time intelligence looks like. Okay, I know what you're probably thinking. Having systems this powerful and this autonomous, it raises a huge question. How on earth do you control them? How do you know you can trust them? The book's answer is that in an agentic bank, trust isn't just assumed, it is engineered in from the very beginning. And that trust really comes down to three key things. First, 
Transparency. Can I actually understand what the agent did and why it did it? Second is alignment. Is it actually working towards the goals I set for it? And finally, accountability. Who owns the outcome? And how do we learn from it when things go wrong? To make this real for someone like Lisa, the book imagines something called an explainability console. Think of it like a dashboard where she can see the step-by-step -step reasoning for any agent decision, trace it all the way back to the original data, check the exact policy it was following, and, if she needs to, log an override. It's what turns a potential black box into a completely transparent, shared thinking process. And this brings us to a really crucial point. Good governance here isn't about slowing things down. It's the opposite. In an agentic bank, building policy and transparency right into the system is what makes it safe enough to move at machine speed. Governance is the enabler, not the bottleneck. So all of this leads to the final, and let's be honest, the most important question. With these agents doing so much, what's left for us humans to do? This is the question, right? If agents can reason and act on their own, what is our role in all of this? And it's so easy to see this as a threat, but the book actually offers a much more optimistic and, frankly, compelling vision. See, our roles don't disappear, they just elevate. Our value shifts from doing the repetitive task to guiding the system. And this requires a whole new set of skills, things like orchestration literacy, so you can work with agents as true teammates, AI judgment, knowing when to trust them and when to step in, and ethical reasoning, so you can make sure our human values are embedded in everything they do. This all leads to this incredible concept the book calls the human dividend. It's simple, really. When you let the agents handle all the repetitive, pattern-based work, it frees up our human talent to focus on the things machines just can't do. Real empathy with clients, long-term strategic thinking, and navigating those really complex, ambiguous situations. We get to move from just processing to focusing on what truly matters. At the end of the day, the book frames the entire situation as a choice. This transformation, it's happening. The only question is, are you going to lead it deliberately, with clarity and courage, or are you just going to inherit it passively? And so, the ultimate question isn't really about technology at all. It's about identity. As intelligence gets woven into the very fabric of an organization, every single leader has to ask themselves, what kind of institution are we becoming? And that is the challenge and the opportunity of the agentic bank.